Today I'm going to show you how I made a virtual music video with a band from a completely different country. The band is called Elevada and the song is called Mia Culpa. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave a link down in the description, but here are some shots. So for this music video, all we needed was a green screen. We were going to use a phone camera, but they ended up hiring a videographer and they used, I believe, a Canon R7 and Unreal Engine, which is another free program. And then again, to do all the color grading and editing, we'll use DaVinci Resolve. So normally with music videos, I sit down and I listen to the song, I don't know, like tens of times and I come up with some sort of storyline and visuals that I want. But with this situation, it was different because I wasn't actually filming it and I didn't have the control of being able to direct them tell them what to do and write a storyline for it. The only real ideas that we had for this one was to show the earth kind of going from lush and beautiful to at the end being like kind of destroyed and stuff like that. So I used that when it came to creating the actual world in Unreal Engine. I also ran around with my Lumix S52X and I put, knowing that the video was going to be an anamorphic 2x39, I used my Blazar Remus. I love those lenses, they're 1.5X. With the Lumix having a open gate option, we're able to seamlessly edit them together. So let's just start with removing the green screen. So I have all the clips here. They're all timed to start at the exact same spot. You'll see why I do this afterwards. And we go into our fusion page, which is right here. Shift spacebar out a Delta key here. I'm going to take this right here and kind of just find a spot close to him. And that looks like it's pretty decent. Go down into, you can press your settings there and then go into color management, DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB color managed. It recognizes which camera we're using and which color space and it corrects it for that. I'm just gonna press one on Delta key here so we can see that. And I press this button here just to see exactly what I'm keying out. I'm just gonna real quick, just do a very quick job of this. There's a lot of things in the shot that don't need to be here. So I just drag in this, mark out everything that's not gonna be used. Go into our Delta here. We're gonna go to mask and invert and then plug it into the bottom here, which is our garbage mask. And then it goes away. Add a despill. I add that despill to remove some of the green because you'll notice in the matte section, it sets to soft color automatically, which is absolute garbage. It just adds a lot of noise to your footage. You wanna go to source and that brings in a lot of the green but then we use the despill to get rid of it. With Unreal Engine, for some reason, video files do not work very well. Every time I import a video file, it crashes. The best thing to do is import a PNG sequence, and that's why I timed all of them up to start at the exact same spot, because when you export from Unreal Engine, you don't get any sound. When you're using a PNG sequence, PNGs are just photos, so there's no sound on that. And we filmed it in 60 frames per second just to get no motion blur. I find it easiest when exporting a PNG, there's different ways you can do a loader in the Fusion, but I just, there's a PNG option, so that's super simple. And then absolutely mandatory, make sure that you click Export Alpha. For those of you who have never heard of Unreal Engine, it's actually a game creating engine. So using it is a little bit complicated and a little bit weirder than you'd expect it. You kind of have to learn it as a game engine. And it's really easy to just like create a world, start with a really simple block out, and then we can go into fab, which is basically all of the assets that used to come for free. I would just go down to free or price free, type in whatever you're looking for. And then these are all the things that you can use. So you just click here, add to project, and you're ready to go. It usually adds into a fab filter here. And then we go into mega scans. I use all mega scans because I have the free assets. I claim them. And then you just have say something like this, drag and drop, and there it is. You can see they're all over the place. I actually use this asset a lot throughout the video. You can upscale it, throw it around in different areas just to make it look like the world's bigger than it is. And then I've also added what's called decals. So you can see in some of the shots, it's adding just like a water look. I took a blood decal, double clicked on it and just removed the saturation. And that makes it look like water. So this is one of the areas that I created. As you can see from the video, this is where I put all the band members in one spot. To import green screen footage, right click, go to media and image media source, test one. You double click on it. We're gonna to go to the sequence path and this is where you're gonna find your PNG sequence. You just click on one of them and it'll recognize this is the folder that all of the footage is coming from. If this isn't showing, click advanced and then make sure that you're lined up to the actual frame rate you recorded in and definitely make sure you save. Right click, go to media and add a media player and click this button, test one underscore MP because it's, as you can see here, a media player. We have to add a plane. And now I'm gonna take this media texture and place it on the plane. And you'll notice it just goes black. And that's because we have to create a sequence for this to show up. We just click here, add level sequence. Right here, it's important to again, make sure that you're in the frame rate that you're meant to be in. Now we click this button where it says track. We're gonna add a media track. Click this plus button right here. 
We're gonna go to media source and then we can type in test, test one, but you'll notice it's still not doing anything. We have to right click on it, go to properties, this section media texture, and then again type test and click on test MP video. And now you'll see it shows up. It's rotated really strangely. So I've got that right, but the scale is actually completely wrong. So I just go 1.6 tab by 0.9 and it corrects the scale. Press this button right here and it creates a camera. And now we're using the middle mouse. We can move around because we're in the camera pilot. I think it automatically jumps into the camera pilot, but if not, you can click, click that button. Perspective, cine camera actor. He's out of focus. All we gotta do is scroll down a bit and we have all of our normal camera settings here. So I'm gonna go all the way lower until he's in focus and set the aperture pretty deep. I want some depth of field. So I set it to 1.2, which is the lowest that an actual camera would do. With the camera selected, I'm just gonna click crop. And I know that I wanna do the anamorphic 2.39. I wanna make sure that we have the squeeze set up because automatically it's set to one, but since we're shooting with a two squeeze anamorphic, now when we set up our bokeh, it'll look like an actual anamorphic. And then same thing with the depth of field too. I'll go between being in the cine camera actor and jumping out, just clicking on this. And if you click this button here, it just pins it. And this way you can hop around the scene a bit better and move the camera. We see our cameras here. I'm gonna press here to create a keyframe and then we can move it over here and either change it around by changing these numbers or since we're piloting the camera, we can just move it around, scroll back, rotate it, create another keyframe here. You change your focal length and you can, same thing, you can keyframe everything as well add the plane in here. And when the camera moves, sometimes you're gonna have to also rotate the footage. So we'll click this button, add a transform, and then on this plane, I should have renamed it to vocalist, but we'll keep the original. And when the camera moves, he moves as well. I chose to use ultra dynamic sky on some of these setups, but if we scroll down, we have volumetric fog, which is like realistic. When light goes through fog, it disperses and scatters. Last thing I did was add a camera shake just to add a lot more realness into the shot. And I'll leave a link in the description just so that this video doesn't get too long. And then the last thing I did was really just like experiment with focusing. So like sometimes you'll have something in focus from here and here. And then like when you're filming metal music videos, you're often like playing around with like focus a lot. And you'll notice in modern metal, metal music videos, a lot of it's out of focus on purpose. So you can see that was really quick, but you get the gist. One of my favorite things in this music video is actually a blender animation that I did. And basically I took the footage of them playing. And like I said earlier in the video, since there's no drummer, there's only two members, I figured it could get kind of boring really quickly if it wasn't for B-roll and if it wasn't for like effects and stuff like that. I'm just gonna add a new plane. We'll go into geometry nodes and then add a new geometry node setup, subdivide mesh. We're gonna add an instance on points. And then you can do it a few ways. What I did was create a cube and then just drag the cube in here. That way I can bevel it and do all the stuff that I want. And you can see it's creating little cubes on every point in there. Image texture. What's important is I also exported a black and white version of this. And it's important because the black values represent zero and the white values represent one. So by importing a black and white version, we'll have the image actual pop, actually pop because of the differences in whites to blacks. And it's actually a video and I couldn't figure out within here how to get it to actually treat itself like a video. I'm gonna create a driver, hashtag frame, and that way, every time a frame goes by, you can see it's going through the video. And then I plug that into scale. Wasn't enough geometry. There's not actually enough geometry even with it to six, so I just subdivided it a couple more times. The black points are absolute zero and the white points are raising and creating that look. That way when I move the camera around, it actually creates something that looks proper. It created a square, so I have to resize it. And now we have our actual proper aspect ratio. And then to dial it in a little bit more, all I did was add a, what's it called, a curve? Just like how you would do in color grading, RGB curves. And then just like mess with the curve a bit more to get that look a bit more. And just do this to taste basically. All I did from there was add a set material node and this way I've created a material within this geometry node. So let's go into the render view. Right now you can't see anything because there's no light. So let's say we make an emission. We'll go to one, let's rename this emission and just make sure in here we click emission and now we've got our texture and that's it. 
And then lastly, I just downloaded some B-roll off of Storyblocks and also I walked around outside in the winter Toronto weather using my Lumix S52X that I'm filming on right now and then using my Blazar Remus 1.5 anamorphic lenses. Since I knew I was gonna end up in a 2.39 aspect ratio, I figured I might as well film it with anamorphics because it'll just, it'll do, it'll do the thing. And I also absolutely love the Remus lenses. I'll do a video on those soon and the camera. I love both. Daily drivers. One thing I forgot to mention is that I, and I know you guys hate AI, so don't hate me on this, but I took an image to 3D model app and it basically created just a 3D model of their album art, which I thought was really cool for the song. I figured it would be cool just to throw it in. So it created a texture and to be honest, the model wasn't ideal. What normally happens with these kind of things is you have to do a lot of work yourself, but I figured this would save me a lot of time modeling the whole thing. I still spent about half an hour to an hour retexturing and remodeling it, but the result, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And then I just added some drivers to these cubes and these spheres, and it's just like slowly moving around him. And then I did another geometry nodes thing that created this, these water drops, and I'm just raising the water drops. So now here's what my final project looked like. Normally I use a multicam because it's just so much easier to have all of these tracks on just one track and then just like kind of splice them in however you want. I couldn't do it with this because there's no sound for me to multi-track off of. So it just syncing it would be a little bit of a nightmare. For this specific video, I wanted to go for like a really grungy look and I really wanted to like hide some of the imperfections that happen with Unreal Engine. So I decided to do a bleach bypass kind of look. Basically what you do is you create a node and then you say add layer node and then it creates this. You wanna make sure that the top one, you roll the saturation to zero. And then in here, you right click it and you go composite mode and you go overlay. And just like that, we went from what looks like this to looking like that. High contrast and just like really desaturated. I love that look. And especially when you're using like heavy CGI, you gotta do what you can to hide all the imperfections. Decided to go really blue with all the footage because it kind of, I don't know, it was pretty orange the way that I exported it. and. Going really blue with it kind of helped me sell some of the other shots, like specifically this forest shot. It didn't turn out the absolute best, but I kind of really liked it. This is what it looks like in the final. And then when it wasn't super blue, it just like, it left a lot to be desired in my opinion. This one's one of my favorite shots. I think actually my favorite shot of the entire music video, this one right here. In the like kind of shot list that I gave the band and the videographer, I asked for one where there's no key light and it's just a backlight on him. And it just like, I wish I got more shots like this. I should have asked to do more because I don't know. I realized how important this kind of shot is. We're only getting like the slightest bit of light right here and it kind of really sells them into the environment. This thing right here means that they're grouped. So I took all of my CG shots and then you can say, grab a couple of these, right click, either add into current group or create a new group. And then once you do that, you have the ability to create a pre-group. And that's where I add my color space transform going from Rec. 709 to DaVinci Wide Gamut. DaVinci Wide Gamut gives you a lot more color information. And then I do the same thing on the out. This way, all of my clips have this same color grade on it, my in and out. And then I put the grain here and I put my output color space. And that way this clip group right here is basically per clip. So if you're trying to make individual changes to a specific shot, it'll all be in here. I just realized I forgot to include some of the effects that I'm doing on each clip. And one of them is halation. Halation basically to emulate old film, uh, it, it kind of creates like a little red line between like hard contrast points. So you can see it's adding this and it just helps sell the CGI a bit more and make it seem like it's a bit more actually done and real. And the second thing that I'm adding is called glow. And I have it set to soft light, but when you first it put it on, it's set to add. And it's basically just adding all of this. So you can go into your glowy image, go glow alone, and it'll show just what's glowing and dial it in that way. But with soft light, this is a Waquaz Kazi trick. He goes all the way with the shine threshold and then turns it to soft light. And it just adds a bit more contrast and punch. There's some things that Unreal Engine doesn't do great. And one of them is lens flares. It kind of just like, it always looks the same. It always looks kind of trash. So what I did was add a few different kind of adjustment layers. And these brown ones are all lens flares, all different kinds of lens flares. I added an adjustment clip and then I just added lens reflections and a bunch of different kinds. You can see there's default streaks. You go through and you see which ones you like. I created a bunch of different ones and then just added it throughout the music video. I also created a few different 
other adjustment clips. This one is like a, it's called a zoom blur. Yeah, it's called a zoom blur. So basically I automated it so that at the beginning of the clip, it's no blurring. And then towards the end, it's creating this like stretching zoom effect. And that's actually like driving a lot of the imagery of this music video. And then aside from that, I just added some mirroring on top of the lens blur, lens blur, lens flare. Figured it would be nice to get a bunch of shots that were like completely out of focus to be like really ominous and stuff like that. It's them in the desert, that kind of desert guitar playing shot. And I just like went to town super blurry, but it just makes it like almost look like they're aliens and kind of like really creepy and eerie. And then yeah, in this section at the end of the video, <clears throat> the lyric is the water is rising. So I figured it'd be cool if the whole premise of the video is just like them playing and in this room with the album art guy, the water's raising slowly and he's just getting drowned. He's drowning. And then here's like all of the B-roll. Some of it's from Storyblocks. Some of it I just shot. This is my girlfriend, one of my girlfriend's skulls. She has a skull collection. And I was like, can I borrow it for a music video? And then yeah, this is this thing right here. Since it's all about the lyrics in the video are like about time and stuff like that. I figured it'd be good to show the world since that was the prompt as well as time going by. And then here's just some B-roll of the Unreal Engine clip of Brian playing guitar, where it's just, um, it's just the atmosphere. It's just the mountains. This is it here, him playing guitar in there. It's basically just this world there. Just not filming him at all, just filming the world. And then I have this shot of Matt here and it's called Destruction. It's just him in like an area with a bunch of like concrete and broken building around him. Hope you found this useful. I learned a lot while creating this video and I strongly suggest that all videographers and cinematographers take like a little bit and learn something like Blender or Unreal Engine because I use it a lot when I'm preparing like productions. Usually I'll send the client like, this is what I'm thinking for what the room's gonna look like. And it's just like a really simple like Blender shot of what it looks like. You can also use things like Polycam where you can go around and like 3D scan a room and actually put the people in the room that you're gonna be filming using Blender or Unreal Engine or something like that. Hope you found use in this. If you liked the video at all, please make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below. And if you haven't checked out the music video, if you like modern metal stuff, I think you'll like it a lot. It's a cool song. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.